The visual examination for a patient can be broken down into many steps. The first will be the response to the pupils to light, both in a direct and indirect and consensual manner. The next examination is to distinguish whilst covering one eye to see if the patient has monocular diplopia, which may be a sign of a penetrating eye injury or rupture of the vitreous of the eye. Binocular diplopia may be a sign of an orbital floor fracture or entrapment of the rectus muscles. Convergence of the eye is next tested for. And then visual acuity is next tested. This is done with the patient sitting six metres away from a Snellen chart and then covering one eye at a time, asking the patient to read the smallest line. And it is recorded as six over six if normal, six at the top being the distance from the Snellen chart and the lower number, the denominator, being the smallest line that can be read in each eye. Visual fields and confrontation can then be performed. This is done by asking the patient to sit directly opposite you and then asking them to cover one eye. The patient is asked to look at the nose and then to tell you when they first see the waving finger coming into their vision, both in the upper and lower quadrants and in the nasal and temporal regions. The patient should see the, your finger at the same time as you do. A red pin and a blind spot examination can also be performed and then fundoscopy can also be performed. This is done to look for a normal optic cup, an optic disc and a macula and normal vessels as well as checking for any evidence of retinal haemorrhages or vitreous tears. Ocular motility is then examined, asking the patient to look in all nine directions. This examination will test cranial nerves 3, 4 and 6.